Welcome back to the 2018 Golf Industry Show. We're here at GCSA TV Live, brought to you in partnership with Lebanon Turf at the Golf Industry Show in San Antonio, Texas. And we are about to wrap up. We actually are in the home stretch, everyone. And my favorite time on the stage is when we bring live animals. We had <laughs> birds, we've had the dogs before, and she looks like she comes camera ready as yes. well as ability to respond to many commands. Rebecca Gibson from Flyaway Geese has been training and herding ducks around we much have. of the time we've been on the stage. So now uh, we have you here to talk about the training of these things. And Mark Kuhn, CGCS, former president, President of the association and of course longtime superintendent at Baltistrol. I think that's a pretty good golf course in New Jersey. It's fair. I yeah. think people have heard of it anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, we are going to talk about the the sort of process of bringing these animals onto your golf course. What's entailed here? Mark's going to bring the superintendent perspective because as we laughed about earlier, you're training the people as well as making sure they can respond. If they can respond to commands and they don't know how to give them, the whole system doesn't work. So. It seems obvious to me, because we know geese are big problems, nuisance wildlife can be a big problem. What's a, what's a dog trainer doing at a golf industry show? Well, you know, years ago it was discovered that because border collies uh, work stock with their heads down and their tails in between their legs and they stalk things, if you've ever watched them work sheep or goats, <laughs> their heads are down, tails are in between their legs. Geese don't see things like uh, humans do. They see color shapes and patterns that trigger brain responses. Uh -huh. Anything that moves with their head down and their tail in between their legs, like these border collies, triggers a predator response. So the geese think that there's a wolf or a coyote on site, but in reality the border collies don't have any interest in doing any harm to the birds. Which of course is key. You brought up a whole bunch of things we have to dis we have to deconstruct a little bit. You've already gone to the heart of it. That's why border collies are ideal for this purpose? That's correct. Huh, because they have that behavior that threatens, but is obviously not lethal. Correct, they stalk. And um, the border collie is the only breed that moves stock with their eye. Other breeds bark at stock or bite at it to move it, uh -huh. like your shepherds and things okay. like that. Okay. You don't want a dog barking on the golf course. Um, okay. So border collies are silent workers. So okay. that's another piece of the puzzle. Yeah, we learned pretty early on golf courses to be quiet. I have had my share of dirty looks when I didn't shut the mower off and people were playing. So well, we know about that being silent. It's very interesting. You casually are using the word stock. And I was thinking, well, what is she? Is she saying walk? Is she, what is she saying? And now I know you mean livestock. Right. I'm a pig farmer. I should know that. <laughs> I don't have a herding animal. Pigs are not, they're very right. easy to herd because you just bring the food around and they know exactly where to go. But geese can be complicated to herd. Sheep can be complicated. That's correct. So are you saying a sheep dog could do geese, but is likely to be noisy, or could do geese, but would try to do harm. Well, a border collie is a sheep dog as well, right. but border collies, again, move stock with their eye. So yes, those dogs that move stock by barking or biting at it, you know, they're not gonna have as much effect on the birds because they don't move in the same way as a border collie. And they could potentially do damage to a bird if they caught it. A border collie has no interest in harming anything. Um, they may hurt it, okay. but they don't hurt it. Okay, so just geese, they can herd anything. Anything. Um, I Anything, good things, bad things. Um, you know, a board dog will do whatever uh, it finds to do. But they'll they'll herd. These guys were geese, coots, um, cormorants, uh, okay. seagulls, any right. type of bird that sits on the ground for any That's period right. of time, or okay. loafs, or sits in the water. They swim after birds, okay. um, so they go into the water without any issues. So anything that spends any time on the ground or water, these guys are great at getting rid okay. of. Okay, and it's not news to anybody that manages uh, golf courses where there's a little bit of water that geese are a growing problem. Correct. Now, uh, we have mentioned before you have been, you sort of made me aware earlier in our time together about the Migratory Bird Act. Uh, let's start with that because as we've discussed, that could be a misnomer now uh, right. for this particular species of bird because they're not migratory any longer. So well, let's start with the Bird Act first. So the Migratory Bird Act of 1918 was what protected geese um, from being hunted year round and that type of thing. Um, there are hunting seasons for geese, but as you know, most golf courses, you can't fire a firearm on a golf course. So hunting season not doesn't really Texas? do you a good. Well, not maybe even in Texas. Texas. <laughs> you fire a firearm anywhere in Texas, right? Um, <laughs> So, you know, these birds are protected by the Migratory Bird Act. Right, right, right. The issue between resident geese and Canada geese is that you can't tell the difference between the two. Right. So I don't know that there'll ever be a time. There is a longer season, uh, hunting season for resident geese. Um, but at the same time, how do you know? I mean, what do you do? Go up to it with the gun and go, hey, Mr. Goose. <laughs> 
Do you so live wait, here they carry or Canada? Cards? They carry cards because maybe Can they can't get back card? in. They go to Canada, they won't be able to get There's back no in. There's no wall. Are you calling them resident geese because if they don't migrate to Canada, they're not considered Canada geese? That's correct. That's correct. Huh. Um, those are now considered resident geese. Now, so what most, is the places, okay. most places don't deal with uh, migratory birds. Unless you're up on the Canadian border or in the migratory flyways, if you've got geese that are staying on your property 365 days a year, those are resident geese. So what are the flyways? Should we talk about the, I mean, when you say near the Great Lakes, I'm, st I'm still two hours from the Great Lakes where I am in upstate New York. Sure. Um, is, is that far enough away or will that be a place where you'd find resident populations you're or migratory see, populations? You're going to see some migratory populations coming down the East Coast, down into the Delmarva mm -hmm. Peninsula mm -hmm. from Canada. Mm -hmm. You're going to see com some coming the Central Flyway Zone yep. down through Mississippi right. Um, right. and uh, that area, Arkansas. That's right. um, and then you'll you'll see some on the west coast. Okay. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you see snow geese on the east coast okay. going down into the Delmarva. Okay. Um, but, you know, okay. th those fly zones, honestly, most of the geese that these guys here at this show are dealing with are okay. resident birds. Okay, well, it, it could be I-95, but they're in Jersey. Yes, they and are. because they're in Jersey and Baltistrol is in New Jersey, uh, I'm assuming one of the reasons we have you here is I have known there are lots of geese problems down in that neck of the woods. You have particular experience with someone related to Bet here, yes. but let's talk about the challenges you've been facing or had been facing with the geese on the golf course. Well, you know, as part of, of an Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary program, you know, it's, it's, we try to maintain uh, the areas for all wildlife species. And if one becomes overabundant, whether it be deer or ground animals or especially geese, uh, it becomes a problem uh, maintaining the food and the, and the areas, the natural areas that we sure. have. So we have had to control the geese, but uh, certainly the, the biggest problem is with the golfers. <laughs> and uh, right. so uh, we do have, uh, we do have uh, Flo, the sister yes. of this pu the puppy right, right here. And uh, she's done a wonderful job. She's been with us a short while, but yeah. we've had dogs from the beginning. Uh, we've had uh, Joe, who came from Seclusible, and then right. we had uh, uh, we, we had our, our second dog. Uh, uh, so, but the more important point is this. To me, you're part of Audubon International's Cooperative Sanctuary Program, and we have done, they have done, everyone's tried who's been involved in that, to really take an effort to create habitat, sure. to encourage a more Absolutely. natural experience for the golfer, and that the golf course can provide more ecosystem services. It just benefits to everybody sure. in a heavily urbanized area, even though it's the Garden State, and we all know there's a lot of good land to the south, where you are, there's a lot of development. So when you try to encourage wildlife, sometimes you might be solving one problem and creating another. Now, obviously we're not gonna blame the naturalization of golf courses with why they have more geese problems. More it's, we've done other things in other places to make it so these birds are staying. What are some of those things? Well, some of the, some of the things that are causing the birds to stay is that they're finding food year round. And that's the biggest thing. You know, The reason they came down from Canada to spend the winters down south was because they needed to eat and so they'd spend their winters you know in places where there were food once they discovered that there was food down here year-round that most of the water doesn't freeze I mean geese use water as a protection mm -hmm. so um, that's how they get away from predators at okay. night so it's that it's that water that keeps them protected once they realize that water in most places in the United States does not really freeze for an extended period of time it was game on you know okay. I mean, it's so a little bit of the climate changing has made sure. this particular problem a little bit worse than it might have been otherwise. So I think we've established pretty well, and we don't have to get into the stories of shoveling goose poop two pounds a night, count up the birds, you're figuring out how much phosphorus fertilizer you're getting from that. I think that more interesting thing is how these guys, these employees come and sure. do their job. So take us through the process of bringing a dog to the point where it's, you know, you have puppies here. Her, 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 her babies. puppies, her babies, and you say she's just about had it with them. She's, she's done with them. She's, <laughs> she's just, just about done, had done it with, with them. It. You can see how nervous she is uh, yes. as we are having this conversation. Take us through the process for these little guys. She's already well trained. You got these little guys. How long until they get from that spot to where you're willing to get them to mark? It takes about a year and a half um, from puppy to to taking their spot on the golf course. You know, um, my dogs. Uh, I start them on birds when they're about 
six weeks old. Um, they start chasing little ducks, and we had a little demo over here naturally. this morning. They do it inherently. I always tell people that the, the instinct of the dog to chase the geese is there. Um, the you can only screw it up. Well, no, <laughs> I have to teach them to stop when I ask them to. Um, that's my big piece of the puzzle. Um, I, most dogs I can get to chase birds. It's getting that control that a facility needs to manage yeah. that yeah. dog. That's the work that's put yeah. into it. Yeah, and you, it. Don't have, you can't have them on a leash because you're, you know, trying to move geese over, right. over large areas. Right. So you're spending a year and a half, and I thought what was fascinating from our time yesterday together where we gave out the award, which we will be doing we afterwards, are. We yes, are. the for, lucky person getting this, is that they can respond to 40 commands. They can. So let's, okay, how does, a year and a half seems pretty quick to get something that doesn't read or write to our knowledge right. to do that. Well, now my kids didn't learn that fast. Okay. So, um, you know, <laughs> I was going to say, it, uh, my kids don't respond to 40 commands. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, they've proven that the Border Collie is the only breed of dog that has the ability to reason. They they took a Border Collie and taught it a thousand different words. So, I mean, the ability is in there. A border How collie, do we know they know it? Do we get, is there a spelling bee for Border Collie? There is, there is. Um, Actually, it's on TV. You That's very it? funny. So they, so they are, and are all shepherding dogs like this? No. No, this is the only breed of dog that they've proven has the ability to reason. Okay. So, you know, we start out with just basic stuff, sits, downs, recalls, things and, like that. And reward. Well, it's a reward-based system? It's a positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement thing. These guys work off of, she works because she wants me to be happy, okay? And if mom's happy, everybody's happy. You know, oh, you've heard man. that? I just, you know? I just want my so. teenager every <laughs> once in a while. Just every once in a while. So, so she really works off of positive and negative reinforcement. So, you know, if I tell her it's bad, she goes, no, I don't want to do that okay. anymore. If I tell her it's good, she wants to. Okay. So, you know, we use that. Um, we use working the birds in the stock oh, to get lefts and right okay. commands oh. on them. So, um, you know, when Greg's been over here doing his demos, He's yeah. got a left and a right, right. and, right. and um, I use those to get the dogs around the sure. ponds to okay. the other okay. side. Um, they load up and ride on the golf right. cart. Um, you know, they'll stay on the golf cart when asked to. Um, you know, all of those types of things so, that are needed so we, on the golf we, course. So we, we actually see how quick 15 minutes goes? Well, that's crazy. That's exactly right. So uh, what I want to do is ask you, right, because she knows what she's doing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but her job now is to make sure you know what you're doing because yeah, if absolutely. she trained them to do a certain thing, yes. she's not coming back all the time. I mean, I, there are services that will bring dogs around sure. to run your golf course, but the partnership and, and, and part of the team that the dogs have become and your ability to have those people on your staff, what's the process like from your end when she sells you well, the dog? Well, we've, we've been blessed to have dogs for a number of years. Uh, actually, I've been there 18 years, so we've had the dogs. Huh. We've tried a lot of different methods to control geese, the wires, the silhouettes yeah. of predators and so forth, uh, chasing them, uh, wizard guns, whatever you have yeah. uh, to chase them off. But this the works. dogs have been the best way to chase so them. So how off. is, she, are they training you? Does she come in for a couple of days and teach We you? don't get treats, but but she does train us. You know, <laughs> no treats. Time, no treats. Positive and negative reinforcement. Positive and negative reinforcement. Yeah. <laughs> but fortunately, we've had people that have handled the dog, so it's a little easier to probably to train us than it is others. But it's right, not because you've now had a history of using this. Yes. Well, let's face it, pest control strategy. Yes. It's a plus. It, you know, we're not calling this a plant health protectant like we do right. in some places. This is pest control, right? Absolutely. So, you once you you get those things, you have that legacy. It's not they've worked like a charm for you. Nothing complicated. No blips. No hey. How come it's working like this? How come it's working like this, Rebecca? We're saying this, she's not doing it. Has right. that ever happened? Uh, no, they've always worked well. And, and having two dogs, which we have on site with Mac and, and Flo, uh, they work in tandem and they do a wonderful job. Even when the geese get into the water, right. they have the commands to, to go in and take them out of the water. And the only thing we get, we get some complaints from the local municipalities and other golf courses. Because you're chasing the geese. You know, we, we, uh, we were say? saying earlier, we're making them into right. migratory right. again, but they're more urbanized migratory. Right. migratory. They migrate in a small area. They migrate in a smaller area. And so um, we're going to go to break. Sure. Um, and we're going to watch a super dog video. But when we return, we're going to be giving it away. In fact, we've actually built a bit of a crowd here, which yes. is its own little story. Thank you very much for Thank chatting with me about this mark always a pleasure to see you Doctor. i'm so glad that these dogs can be and they're such a part of the team you know i'm a sap for it nobody needs to anybody's been here all week i've been crying all week when you lose a dog it's like losing anything else you fall in love with it, it breaks your heart we've lost two over those 18 years and i'll tell you 
You become so attached to yeah. them, you just cry like a That's baby. That's exactly when right. Gone. Yeah. So, um, thank you for joining us. We'll be back in a little bit. The Super Dog video is next. I'm Frank Rossi. This is the Lebanon Turf GCSA live stage. We'll be back in a minute with the winner of the dog. Yes.